Hi, and welcome to our webcast on applying IFRS 9 to financial assets with prepayment features. I'm Liz Figge, and I'm a senior technical advisor here on the ISB staff. Before I start, I'd like to remind you that, as is always the case with our webcasts, the views expressed today are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of the ISB or the IFRS Foundation. The objective of this webcast is to discuss how to apply the contractual cash flow test, or SPPI test, to prepayable financial assets. In doing so, I will describe and highlight the relevant requirements that exist today in IFRS 9. Of course, the objective of this webcast is neither to provide an interpretation of nor to change the requirements in IFRS 9. The next few slides summarize the requirements in IFRS 9 that are relevant to classifying prepayable financial assets. Section 4.1 of IFRS 9 sets out the general requirements for classifying financial assets. An entity classifies financial assets as subsequently measured at amortized cost, fair value through other comprehensive income, or fair value through profit or loss on the basis of both the contractual cash flow characteristics of the financial asset and the entity's business model for managing financial assets. A financial asset is eligible to be measured at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income only if the contractual terms of the financial asset give rise on specified dates to cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest on the principal amount outstanding. We often refer to this assessment as the SPPI test, and I'll use that label throughout this webcast. It's important to note that for the purpose of applying the SPPI test, IFRS 9 specifies the meaning of both the word principal and the word interest. In some cases, a financial asset may have cash flows that are labeled in a contract as principal and interest, but those cash flows actually don't reflect the payment of principal and interest as those words are described in IFRS 9. And if that's the case, those assets wouldn't meet the SPPI test. So an, so an entity needs to carefully analyze the characteristics of an asset's contractual cash flows in order to apply the SPPI test, rather than rely on how those cash flows are labeled. As I previously mentioned, this webcast focuses on the SPPI test. As a result, the business model test and the fair value option are outside the scope of today's presentation. Some prepayable financial assets meet the SPPI test and are eligible to be measured at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income. IFRS 9 is very specific about which prepayment features meet the SPPI test. In particular, applying paragraph B4.1.11B, which is re re reproduced here on this slide, a prepayment feature results in contractual cash flows that meet the SPPI test if the prepayment amount substantially represents unpaid amounts of principal and interest, which may include reasonable compensation for the early termination of the contract. As I mentioned on the previous slide, IFRS 9 specifies the meaning of the word principal and the word interest for the purposes of the SPPI test, so those descriptions apply here. The notion of reasonable compensation for the early termination of the contract will often require an entity to apply judgment in order to determine whether that amount meets the SPPI test. And specifically, an entity must analyze whether such an amount is compensating one of the parties for a consequence of the early termination of the contract, and if so, whether that compensation is reasonable. <laughs> 
There is a narrow exception in IFRS 9 that applies to financial assets that would otherwise meet the SPPI test, but don't meet that test only as a result of a prepayment feature. Specifically, applying paragraph B4.1.12, such assets are eligible to be measured at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income if three conditions are met. First, the entity must have acquired or originated the financial asset at a premium or discount to the contractual par amount. Second, the prepayment amount must substantially represent the contractual par amount and accrued but unpaid contractual interest, which may include reasonable compensation for the early termination of the contract. And third, the fair value of the prepayment feature must be insignificant when the entity initially recognizes the financial asset. In developing this exception, the board observed in particular that it will apply to many purchased credit impaired financial assets with contractual prepayment features. If such an asset is purchased at a deep discount to the contractual par amount, but contractually can be repaid immediately at that par amount, then those contractual cash flows would not meet the SPPI test. So let's say, for example, an entity buys a distressed loan in the secondary market for 50 today, but contractually the loan could be repaid tomorrow at its par amount of 100. Apart from this exception, that asset would not be eligible to be measured at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income. And that's because the return, if the asset was prepaid, would result in a super profit that is well above the return from a typical lending relationship. However, the board decided that amortized cost measurement would provide useful information to users of financial statements about these assets when the prepayment feature has an insignificant fair value at initial recognition. And this will be the case if it is very unlikely that prepayment will occur. Of course, the scope of this exception is not limited to purchased credit impaired financial assets. But it's important to stress that this exception applies only to those financial assets that meet all three conditions set out on this slide. So for example, unless the prepayment amount meets the second condition set out on the slide, which includes the usual requirement that any compensation is reasonable compensation for the early termination of the contract, the fact that the fair value of a prepayment feature is insignificant because prepayment is very unlikely does not enable the financial asset to be eligible for measurement at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income. The next few slides discuss some views that we've heard related to the classification of prepayable financial assets. Some have suggested that a prepayment feature will, without further analysis, meet the SPPI test as long as the prepayment amount reflects one or more particular factors. Specifically, that a prepayable financial asset will meet the SPPI test as long as the prepayment amount, or specifically the compensation that is included in that prepayment amount, is agreed by both parties to the contract, or reflects market practice, or is labeled or described as a make whole provision, or is unlikely to be triggered because prepayment is unlikely to occur, or is computed using a market rate. So in other words, some may view these factors as sufficient in themselves to conclude without further analysis that the prepayment feature meets the SPPI test. And in particular, we understand that when these factors are present, some are of the view that it can be assumed that the compensation is reasonable compensation for the early termination of the contract. Applying IFRS 9, the factors on slide 8 may be relevant to an entity's analysis of a prepayment feature. And that is a prepayment amount that reflects one or more of those factors may indeed meet the SPPI test and thus such a prepayable financial asset may be eligible to be measured at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income. But the factors on slide eight are not in themselves sufficient, either individually or collectively, 
to conclude that a prepayment feature meets the SPPI test in IFRS 9. An entity must perform further analysis to determine whether the prepayment feature meets the SPPI test. Before I end this webcast, I'd like to summarize three main points. Consistent with all contractual terms of a financial asset, an entity must analyze a prepayment feature to determine whether it meets the SPPI test. Specifically, in order to be eligible for measurement at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income, an entity must conclude that the prepayable financial asset either meets the requirements in paragraph B4.1.11B, which are set out on slide five, or meets all of the conditions for the exception in paragraph B4.1.12, which are set out on slide six. But it is not possible to conclude that a prepayment feature meets the SPPI test simply based on the factors set out on slide eight. IFRS 9 requires further analysis. Thank you very much for listening to today's webcast.